Thank you for joining us for another Giving Tree Story Time. Today we're going to be reading Still a Family, written by Brenda Reeve Sturgis and illustrated by Joe Shen Lee. And this is published by Albert Whitman and Company. So this is a heartwarming story about a homeless family told through the eyes of a child. So if you stick around till the end of the story, I'm going to give you some things to think about and maybe discuss with a grown-up at home. Some things for us just to ponder about homelessness and about maybe how the little girl in this story feels. So let's go ahead and get started. We live in the city shelter, my mom, my doll, and me. My dad lives in a different shelter down the street, but we're still a family. I sleep on a cot near my mom. Bunk beds border the walls in a large room. People snore, subways roar, buses, cars, and taxis honk. I toss and turn and try to fall asleep. I miss my quiet room, my comfy bed, and my cozy quilt. I cuddle with my doll Molly, and even though my dad isn't there to tuck me in, we're still a family. While the older kids are at school, I play. Cots make fun forts. Sometimes I don't want to come out from under the bed. I share my doll with the girl beside me. We take turns all afternoon. My new friend calls Molly Madeline. I think it's okay if my doll has two names. Some days we meet my dad in the park. We slide on slides. Hide and seek is our most favorite game of all. Sometimes we stop to pet puppies or sniff the flowers. We are together and we are still a family. I love you to the moon and back, Dad says. I love you to the moon and back two times, I reply. Dad blows us a kiss. We catch it in the air, quick. My mom, my doll, and me. We blow kisses back and forth until we're out of sight. And even though Dad goes one way, and we go the other, we're still a family. One rainy day, we fish a tattered tarp out of the trash can and we make a lean-to. My head gets wet, but I don't care. My mom finger combs my hair and then braids it. Dad hugs us both tight in that small, squishy space. We are together and we are still a family. My parents look for the work every day and take turns taking care of me. We scrimp and save all our pennies. And even though my shoes are a little snug, I don't complain too much. We stand in long lines that snake around the corner. Waiting such a long time to eat is so hard, but I try my best to smile. And even though my belly grumbles, I share my food with my doll. She likes the beef stew best of all. Days and weeks and months go by. We celebrate holidays. And even though we live in different shelters, we are still a family. On my birthday, dad lights a candle on my chocolate cupcake. Make a wish, my mom says. I close my eyes tight. Then I blow out the candle, share my cupcake with my doll, and smile, because we are still a family. The end. So I hope you enjoyed the story. I think sometimes when we think of the homeless community, we think of men and women, young and old, but it can also affect children as well, people just like you and me. What do you think the hardest part of not having a home would be? So in this story, the little girl mentions that she misses her quiet room. She hears people snoring and she hears the subway and the traffic. So it was probably really difficult for her to fall asleep. Think about that. And also not having a space to call her very own. That was probably pretty difficult. Think about what it means to you to have your home. She talks about her doll, Molly, but she doesn't mention other toys. So if you think about it, she probably wasn't able to have a lot of her own personal things with her. 
um, maybe other toys or books or even other, to other um, pieces of clothing. What is something that belongs to you that would be very special that you might want to have with you if you could only pick one or two things? And also, the feeling of hunger. So we've all, all experienced a time when maybe we were a little hungry, especially in between lunch and dinner time when you get sort of a nagging feeling and you're feeling a little hungry and you might need a snack. But she had that feeling quite a bit, especially remember when she was waiting in line at, for the soup kitchen with her mom and dad, waiting for that meal. So that probably had to be really difficult. My favorite part of the story is the love that they still had as a family. What was your favorite part? So I want to thank you for joining me today. And grown-ups, if you want to check us out online, our website is givingtreefamilies.org. And you can also find us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. And of course, subscribe to our channel for future videos and other story times. So thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, bye-bye.